Buenas tardes. ¿Cómo están? Bien, ¿ya pudieron almorzar bien? Excelente. Mira, bueno, mira, yo tengo el placer de presentar nada más y nada menos que a Peter Fernández. Peter gestiona todo lo que es la publicidad móvil para México, para Argentina, para todo lo que es Latinoamérica en Brasil. Este, lo más interesante de Peter es que Peter viene este, de, margen, de manejar y gestionar todo lo que es la publicidad móvil cuando nosotros adquirimos AdMob. ¿Todo el mundo sabe lo que es AdMob? ¿Han escuchado hablar de AdMob anteriormente? Y antes de eso, este, Pete trabajó como este, consultor en estrategia en Bain Company. Entonces, sin más que informar, perdón, les voy a presentar a Peter Fernández. Por favor, un aplauso. ¿Está bien? Hola, ¿todo bien? Bueno, disculpen que no les voy a presentar hoy en español. Todavía estoy aprendiendo y será mucho mejor en inglés, ¿ok? Me disculpen, por favor, y gracias. Um, so, I'm going to talk to you guys today about uh, making a business from mobile applications. Can I see a show of hands for how many of you are actually developing a mobile app currently or already have a mobile application? Wow, a lot, that's great. Um, can I see hands for iPhone apps? Okay, can I see hands for Android apps? Blackberry apps? Oh, a good amount. Uh, Windows apps? Cool. Palm? Nobody? Any, something else that I'm completely unaware of? Some other kind of mobile app? Okay, good. At least I know about them all. Cool. All right, so good. That helps me figure out what exactly is relevant for you guys. Um, just so everyone knows right now, I would love to talk to you guys after this presentation about your specific mobile applications and your specific businesses. I'll just be on the side, so after I'm done here, please come up and talk to me, okay? Also, during this presentation, I don't know how easy it is to do questions here, but if anything doesn't make sense, please just raise your hand and ask me a question. It's a lot more fun if it's a conversation and not just me blabbing to you, okay? So let's try to keep it more interactive. So. As you guys know, Android and iPhone especially are enormous. They're exploding right now. We're actually, uh, we as Android are launching about 500,000 new units into the world every single day. And when you take into account all the iPhones, iPod touches, and iPads that are being launched, there's almost a million of these being activated every single day. So we've reached an incredible level of scale with the, in terms of the proliferation of these devices. What that means is that we're seeing just unbelievable usage patterns. So do you guys know the game Angry Birds? Who, who's seen the game Angry Birds? Everybody. OK, so I'm sure you guys are all contributing to this statistic, OK? 125 years of the game Angry Birds are played every single day around the world. OK, this is an enormous amount of usage of this one game that's happening. Uh, and it's due to the proliferation of those devices. You can't see it because my face is over it. Oh, there we go. Uh, we also see that YouTube Mobile has 200 million playbacks per day. YouTube Mobile is actually the second largest video website in the world. The first biggest is YouTube. The second biggest is YouTube Mobile. So people are becoming incredibly engaged with these devices, which is what's producing the opportunity for all of you to get involved in this ecosystem by providing applications that keep these users engaged. You know, the ecosystem that, that iPhone has is only strong because people like you are developing some of the 400,000 apps that are in the store. And same thing with Android. And this is, a, this is a new thing. We haven't seen a technology platform like this before. Now, in terms of, you know, how we can talk about you guys building stronger businesses, there's a few dynamics that are, are worth knowing about. This is what the app landscape looked like three years ago, okay? You know, can, keep in mind, in the beginning of 2007, I think it was, there wasn't even a such thing as a smartphone, okay? The iPhone came out in 2007, so this is all still really, really new. If you were building an app three years ago, it was really easy for people to find you because they were like 10, okay? These were the days where you could put fart app into the store and you'd get 10,000 downloads immediately. That's not really the case anymore. There are now 400,000 apps in the store, okay? 
So you're in a much more competitive environment. It makes it harder to get users. It makes it harder to make money. But there is a lot of money to be made. And part of this conversation is going to be about how do you make that money. This is a, pre this is a chart showing requests and revenue, OK? So the red line is every single time there's a page view inside of a mobile application. And that mobile application asks AdMob for an ad. OK? Every time an app says, every time Angry Birds says, hey guys, we need an ad, we send them an ad. That's called a request. So what you can see is that inventory usage of mobile applications is growing like crazy. OK? Along with that is revenue. So this blue line is money that AdMob, and I'm going to explain more about what AdMob is. This blue line is money that AdMob is paying to app developers just like you guys for every single time they show one of our ads. So usage is growing and revenue is following behind. Okay, so there's a lot of money to be made. As a matter of fact, Gartner believes that this year the overall application uh, market is worth $15 billion. Okay? That means the amount of money that app developers like you can make in total on advertising, on paid downloads, on in-app goods, on any other number of things which we're going to talk about globally this year is $15 billion. Okay? So out of nothing, you know, 2007 there was nothing. 2011 we have a $15 billion market that you guys are participating in. And it's going to keep on growing just like that. So how much can an individual developer make? So here's an example from Latin America. Okay? Have you guys seen this game Ad Smasher? Has anyone seen this? Hands? Okay, some people have seen it. Okay, not everyone has seen it, okay? So that tells you something. It's not the most popular app in the world. This is a Brazilian app developer who put this app in the store in September of last year, okay? It hasn't even been a whole year. How much do you think he's making? Can we move the square? $2 million a year, okay? He put this app in the store less than a year ago. And he's now making $2 million annualized run rate, US dollars, only on AdMob apps. That doesn't even count what he's making on in-app purchases, on all kinds of other stuff which we're going to talk about, OK? So, so that's the, the, an example of the kind of money you can make. And he's driving 45% of his downloads through AdMob. So, the major, so almost half of his downloads are coming through AdMob. And I'm going to talk to you guys about how you can also use AdMob or other services to get a lot of downloads as well. Basically, what this guy did right was he developed a really good app that people wanted to use. Okay? It's a high quality application. And then he used intelligent business practices to get users and then to make money for, off of the usage from those users. That's, what, that's kind of what we're going to keep on talking about in this presentation. So let's think about how much you can make. This is a very, very, very simple example of a way to start thinking about how much money you can actually make. Basically, it comes down to how many users do I have and how much do they use my application, OK? Because usage is what makes you money, at least when we're talking about advertising. So let's say you, you have an application with two revenue streams. One revenue stream is advertising. That means you join an ad network like AdMob, and we pay you every time someone clicks on one of our ads inside of your application. That's basically how advertising, how advertising works. Then there's also things like upsell. So let's pretend that your other revenue stream is you have a free application, and it has 15 levels. Let's pretend it's a game. And when the user beats level 15, you say, oh, do you want the next 20 levels? then you know, it's $1.99. That's an example of an upsell. People pay you $1.99 to be able to keep on playing the next part of the game. So let's talk about how you might think about the value of a user. So this, these are things that you need to figure out within your own application. So let's say your average user uses your app 20 times in total. Let's say that each time they do five page views. You know, hopefully you can make more page views than, than just five. I can guarantee you that every single session of Ant Smasher has over 50. Okay? Sorry. Um, 
that means that you're going to can you guys hear me? OK. That means that you're going to give each user an, an average of 100 ads over the course of their lifetime as your user. If your eCPM is $1.50, and we're going to talk about what eCPM means, but basically it means how much the ad network, like an ad mob or someone else, pays you for every 1,000 page views that you generate. Okay? If your eCPM is $1.50, which is a good average, then your average value per customer on ads is about 15 cents. Okay? So using a similar uh, calculation over here, if 5% of your users convert to your paid app, which is a good conversion, right? And the price of your paid app is $3, then on average you're going to make around 15 cents per user, okay? Because only 5% of them are going to convert. So basically, per user, you've got an average value of 15 cents from advertising, an average value of 15 cents from upselling. That's an average value of 30 cents per user, okay? So you need to do this own calculation for your own type of app. So there are lots of things that can change in this calculation. For example, ads per session. Games tend to generate many, many, many more ads per session because people just keep on playing them. They just keep on playing them. News, news, weather, sports type applications tend to generate many fewer types of ad ads. The reason is people go, they read the news, they read three, four stories, and then they're done. You showed them three, four ads. That's it. Another, another category where you can get a lot of page views and increase that number from 5 to 10, 15, 20 is social. Twitter apps, for example, Twitter clients. People use your app as, you, as much as they use Twitter, which is a lot. So they'll be on it all day long, seeing ad impressions. So there's lots of things you can do to ch that, that are going to change the way this calculation works for you. But this is a first step to figuring out how much money can I actually make from this business, and then figuring out how many users do I need to acquire in order to have a profitable business. Once you've done that, there's basically three steps that you need to focus on. And I'm going to talk through each of these steps in order. The first thing is promoting. Okay, You need to get more users. There's 400,000 apps in the store. It's really hard to find your app. Okay, So the way to get users is through promotion. And there's a lot of ways to do that that we're going to talk about. You need to set up a, 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 a structure so that you can earn money. Okay, And there's many different ways to earn money. I'm mainly going to talk about advertising, but there's other things too that I'll talk about a little bit. And the last thing is it says measurement here under my face. Measure. Uh, measurement. There's a lot of analytics that we're, we're always very surprised that a lot of developers don't know a lot of things about their own app. They don't know what is the most popular feature. They don't know if it's a game, what level do people always get stuck on? There's a lot of things that they don't know about the game or about the application that would help them, frankly, develop a better application and have a stronger business. So I'm going to give you guys a few tips on how you can start learning more about your application and start making decisions based on that to have a stronger business. As I mentioned, there are 400,000 apps in the store. Okay, Very hard to find an application. One other thing I'll, I'll mention. Do, does, do you guys, does anyone here know what their rank in the App Store is? Raise your hands if you do. Who knows what their rank in the iTunes App Store is? So what I'm talking about is, you know how there's like a top 25 and a top 50? Like I know that right now Angry Birds is number, probably number 11 in the App Store in Mexico. Does, do you guys know what your rank in the App Store is? Raise your hand if you do. Not very many people do. Okay. Surprising. We should talk about that. Okay. Most people are not even in the top 100. Okay? But think about the way that most users find their applications. Okay? They go, I'm just talking about iPhone now, it, but you can, you can think about the way this is for Android too. It's very similar. People go to their phone, they open the App Store, the first thing they do is they click Top 25, and they look at the Top 25 apps. Sometimes they hit next 25, and then they see the top 50. Very rarely they hit next 25, and they see the top 75 apps. If you're not even in the top 100, there's almost no way for a user to find you. 
Yes, they can go into categories. Yes, they can search directly for you. But those are things that are going to happen much less frequently than when people go to the top 25. Okay? So if you think about that, it's worth checking your rank. A very good website that you can use to check your rank is called appanny.com. If anyone wants to get that from me later, just come talk to me and I'll, I'll give you the name. Uh, it's worth checking your rank. Every increase in rank is worth dozens of downloads. People who are in the top 10 are getting literally 15 to, 20 more down, 15 to 20 times more downloads per day than people who are not even in the top 100. It's a huge, huge driver of success. Okay, So that's something to keep in mind. The way that you, one, one very good way that you can promote your application to get more downloads is through paid app promotion. Okay? So this is an example of you advertising your application inside of other applications. So this is an example with Battle Bears. Battle Bears is a game that we work with. And they are here. They're putting an advertisement using AdMob inside of this other application, which looks like, it looks like the movies application. Okay? Basically, when a user clicks on this ad, it takes them directly to the page in the App Store where the user can then, if they want, download the app. Okay? And that's what's happening here. This is a very good way to get your app in front of users of other applications. Okay? On average, just a, few, just, you know, a statistic for you guys to know, on average, when someone goes from here to here, 5% of people then choose to actually download the app. Just something to think about when you're judging the investment. This is something that anyone can do right now. You can go to admob.com. You can open an account. You can, this, all you have to do to make this ad is put in a little picture, which you already have anyway from your app tile, and type in some text. And then you'll be advertising across a network, the AdMob network, of 90,000 other applications. You will be advertising inside of those. Okay? So this is one very good way to promote your application. And the idea is to accelerate the standard user adoption curve. Okay? So this is what a typical user engagement curve looks like. The x-axis is time. The y-axis is active users. What happens is when you have a new app, you get more users, you get more users, you get more users. It keeps on growing a little bit. And then just naturally over time, you start to see a little bit of drop off of engaged users. Some people used your app a bit, and then they stopped. And basically, you, know, you have a, a group of users that will continue to go on using your application. What we are trying to do when we promote your app, when we run those ads just like Battle Bears, is to get you more users and get them to you faster. We're trying to do this. okay? So faster and more. This is the kind of thing that you can do with app promotion. And remember, the reason you care about this is that more users means more revenues, based on the stuff I was showing you guys earlier. Another big reason to do app promotion, like what I was showing you with Battle Bears, is that the more downloads you get per day, the higher your rank in the App Store. So this is an example of, this is again from Brazil. This is an application that we promoted. It's called Radio Skol. OK, Skol is a beer brand. And they did an application that would let you listen to music. What we did was we saw what, how was their app performing. When their app was in the store, on that category, you see their ranking. Their ranking was around 98. Okay? They were right around the number 100 rank. They were getting about 20 downloads per day. Very small number of downloads per day. When we started running a campaign to put ads for this application inside of other applications, we started to see many more downloads. Remember, 5% of the people who clicked on that ad downloaded Radio Skol. So we started driving lots and lots of downloads. This blue line is ranking. You see that their ranking in the App Store continued to increase all the way up to number 10 in the App Store. Okay? And remember what I was saying earlier. When you're number 10 in the App Store, every time someone goes and hits top 25, they're going to see you there. 
That's a lot of exposure. That's how you're going to get discovered in the App Store. And that's what happened here. I'm going to skip this. Another thing that you can do is house ads. How many people have more than one app? Awesome. OK. So you can be using house ads to cross-promote your applications. And this is the same thing as what I was just talking about, except it's free. OK? So this is an example of, this is a publisher called Backflip. Backflip is an app development company in the United States. They have several apps, OK? One of them is called Strike Night. One of them is called Ninjump. And one of them is called Bugganoids. So here, what we're seeing is, I'm a user. I'm using Ninjump. Backflip is showing me an ad for Bugganoids. If I hit here, it's going to take me to the App Store so that I can download Bugganoids. So now I have two apps from Backflip. So Backflip is now making more money from the same user. And that is completely free. Okay? So right now, this is another thing you can do right now in AdMob. You can set up an account so that in app number one, you're promoting app number two. In app number two, you're promoting app number one. And together, you grow them both. And you'll see the same effect in terms of increasing your rank in the App Store, except that it's completely free. What we're trying to do here is basically, you know, you have your first app, app A. Probably when you release app B, you're going to see the same exact curve, unless you use house ads, which means we're going to get users from app A to start using app B. And that way, you're going to get more users for app B faster. This is the concept of house ads. This is what we're trying to accomplish with those. Again, you can go right now to admob.com, and this is all free. So about making money. There are lots of different ways that you can make money. So one thing that we see people do a lot to make money from their applications is they have a paid app. It, the app costs $2 or it costs $3. There's no problem with a paid app, OK? You should, have, you, you should feel free to make a paid app. You shouldn't only have a paid app, OK? The reason is people are much less likely, users are much less likely to download an application that they can't even try, but that they have to pay for, OK? So we see that you know, when we do a campaign, for example, on average, 5% of people choose to download a free app Less than 0.1% of people choose to download a paid app. So you can have a paid app, and you may get a few downloads, and you may make some money. But you're not going to get anywhere near as many users as if you have a free app. Instead, what we strongly recommend is the freemium model. Okay? This is exactly what Angry Birds does, just to use an example that everybody knows. You can get a free version of Angry Birds. And the way this works is people use Angry Birds. They play it in bed. They play it when they're supposed to be driving. They play it when they're supposed to be paying attention to a, to a show where a guy is on stage talking. They play it too much. They get completely addicted. Okay? And then they get to level 15, and it says, hey, if you want more levels, it costs $2. At that point, you're completely addicted. You're like, okay, $2 is fine. I'm willing to pay $2 because I really, really like this. Okay? It doesn't have to be games, OK? It can be with anything. It can be with a local app or with a social app. You just you charge for, for added functionality that your power users really care about. So you have a bunch of users on the free version, and you've seen it. In Angry Birds, there's ad mob ads. They're making a lot of money from ad mob ads. And then a small percentage of those users also buy the paid version for 2 3 $4. And that's that calculation we were talking about at the beginning. That's freemium. And that's a model that we recommend a lot more than only having a paid app. In-app purchase is another model. Uh, this is example things like, for example, uh, if you have a game app, sometimes you can't, oh, for example, in Angry Birds, actually, there's another example. Sometimes you just can't get past a certain level, right? You try it a million times, you're stuck on it, Sometimes Angry Birds will offer you the ability to buy the Mighty Eagle. Okay, so it's this bird that basically destroys everything. It's amazing. You're cheating, but it's okay. Whatever. 
So that's an in-app purchase. It's a little banner that pops up and says, hey, aren't you sick of this level? Buy the Mighty Eagle for a dollar or whatever. Okay? That's, the kind of, that's an example from games, but there are many examples for other types of applications as well for in-app purchases. So for example, if you have a travel guide for Mexico City, maybe you get people to use it uh, because they really want to learn about restaurants. Uh, and then you say, OK, if you also want to learn about bars, we have a, a package of bar reviews. It's an extra dollar. That's an example of an in-app purchase, the kind of thing that you can do to continue monetizing those users. No matter what you're doing, though, advertising is pretty is usually a really good way to make money. Uh, and then you can add on paid, and you can add on in-app purchases. The only place you don't want to have advertising is in, a, is in the paid version of your app. Users hate that. Users hate it when they, when they pay for an app, and then it has ads anyway. They know you already made money from them because they bought the app. So don't also make money on them with advertising. They don't want it. They only accept it on free versions. So I'm going to talk mainly about advertising, because that's the main thing that I can help you with. Everything else, is, you have to figure out yourself. Okay? It's best to go look at the best applications in the store and see how they're doing it. Okay? I'm going to talk to you guys about advertising. So remember I showed you that Ant Smasher makes two million bucks a year. Okay? The number of developers earning more than 100,000 US dollars has quadrupled since 2009. They won't let us share the actual number, but it's a lot. It's not like it used to be one and now it's four. Okay? It's like a lot. Dozens and dozens of, app of developers are now making over $100,000 a year with advertising. Okay? So Ant Smasher is just one example, also from Latin America. I'm going to go back real quick. Why is this? I want, I want to explain a little bit better why this is. Okay? The way AdMob works is here's AdMob, okay? Here's all the developers. All of these developers have users. And the users you know, generate page views inside of the applications. Every time a user looks at a page inside of an app, the app says, hey, give us an ad. We send them an ad. So that's how the developer makes money. Where do those ads come from? Okay? These ads come from the other side, advertisers. We have advertisers, big brand names, right? Just Ford, McDonald's, you know, just think of any brand name you want. These are advertisers. These guys are all saying, wow, everybody is using applications nowadays. How do I advertise inside of those applications, right? So Nike is saying, I want to reach users of sports games to advertise my new line of soccer jerseys. Okay? That's what Nike is thinking about. So we're in the middle. Nike says to us, we want sports games. We say, OK, here are the sports games. Next time they ask for an ad, we're going to send them a Nike ad. Okay? The reason that developers are making so much money nowadays is that the advertisers are buying more and more and more mobile applications. Or sorry, more mobile advertisements. And the reason is they see what's happening. They see that there are 900,000 iPhone and Android devices being activated every single day. And they want to be where the users are. They want to advertise to those users. The other reason is that mobile gives a fantastic way for advertisers to reach users. It's very targeted. The phone knows where you are. That means that advertisers, for example, Liverpool, or just think of any store or any other local business, can send ads only to people in Mexico City who are close to a store. That's the kind of thing you can only do on a phone. You can't do it anywhere else. That's why advertisers are so interested in your application. That's why they want to buy your inventory. Because it's on a phone, they can do those sorts of things. So I'm going to show you, an, earlier you saw an example of what a standard banner looks like, that Battle Bears banner. That could also have been a banner from Ford, for example. I'm going to show you another type of banner right now, which is a rich media banner. This is what advertisers are buying nowadays. And this is the kind of thing that if you join the AdMob network or another network, this is the kind of ad that you might be seeing inside your application. Okay? So what you're going to see here is a video 
of a user going into a game. It's another game by Backflip called Paper Toss. And then they see an ad which the Paper Toss gets paid for. Sorry, it's tap tap. So this is an ad now, OK? This is a full-fledged HTML5 ad, OK? That's actually an HTML5 microsite inside of an ad unit. This is super valuable for Nike. There's no other platform where a user can touch the jersey, where the user can play around with it, change colors, where the user can go like this and the whole thing turns with it. You can't do that on your laptop. You can't touch your laptop. You can't turn your laptop. You can, but you wouldn't want to. There's a lot. Anyway, you get the idea, right? Nike is willing to pay a lot for this. That's why your inventory is getting so valuable. So generally, again, the way it works, I, I alluded to this earlier. A user goes into your app. They see an ad. We send you the ad. All you have to do is install our SDK. You never have to do anything again. We'll just keep on sending them to you. When they click on it, you get paid. It's as simple as that. Okay, that's the basic model. I know you guys have are aware that there are. We're not the only ad network out there. There's AdMob, and then there are other ad ad networks also. We are the largest one. We are now generating, I believe, somewhere around four billion page views per month. Uh, only in Latin America. But there are others, which you should consider. You should always consider all of your options. I just want to show you one quick slide on math to help explain how you should evaluate networks. It's the only slide that I have that has math on it. And then we'll get back to pictures. OK. This is just a quick review of basic advertising math. You guys are developers, right? You're focused on making applications. I just want to quickly show you the business side for one second. So let's say that you have an application that gets 120,000 paid ad requests per day. An ad request is every time your app says to AdMob, hey, we need an ad, which is basically every single page view. Right? There's some page views where you shouldn't put an app, right? It's really annoying if you put an app in certain parts of your or put an ad in certain parts of your app. So don't do that. But pretty much every page view, you can have a different ad. That's called an ad request. Okay? Fill rate is how often the ad network has an ad for you. Just because you tell AdMob I want an ad doesn't mean that AdMob has an ad. Maybe AdMob had a bad month and didn't sell out that much to Nike. AdMob might not have an ad for you. So the percentage of time that they do have an ad is called fill rate. So if the fill rate, just as an example, is 83%, you're going to get 100,000 ad impressions. That means 100,000 actual ads to show your users. If your click-through rate meaning the percentage of the time that someone clicks on an ad is 1.5%, then you have 100,000 times 1.5% equals 1,500 clicks. That's how many clicks you got in that day. CPC is what the advertiser is paying for those clicks. Nike told AdMob, we want to pay 10 cents per click, because that's how much it's worth it to us. So let's pretend it's 10 cents, then you, may, you got 1,500 clicks times 10 cents, you made $150 in one day. OK? So this is, this is how you make money. And what I want to show you here is a metric called RPM. RPM is the most important metric when you're looking at an ad network. RPM is how much money you make for every 1,000 ad requests, those things at the top. You have 120,000 of them. You want to try to make as much money as possible from those 120,000. RPM is a way of measuring how much money you made on all 1,000 requests. So it's revenue divided by requests times 1,000. So in this example, it's $150, which was your revenue, divided by 120,000 ad requests times 1,000, which in this scenario, is $1.25. Sorry. OK. So in this case, your RPM was $1.25.
Here's the reason why I'm telling you this. A lot of ad networks like to talk about their ECPMs, OK? ECPMs don't take into account fill rate. ECPM is a measurement of how much money you make when they have an ad to send you. But that's not very helpful if they never have an ad to send you, right? You'll make less money. So here's an example. Ad network A comes to you and they say, oh, I have an ECPM of $1 and my fill rate is 83%. That means your RPM is 83 cents, if you do the math like we talked about on the last slide. Network B says, oh, I have an e ECPM of $3. That sounds awesome. Now you're like, oh, I want to work with network B. But if you ask them, they have a fill rate of 25%. That means doing the same calculation as on the last slide, their RPM is 75 cents. So basically, we're in a situation where if you're looking at ECPMs, sure, B looks better than A. You might accidentally choose B. But in reality, who's going to make you more money? A is. This is RPM. This is the most important metric. When you're talking to an ad network, do not let them talk to you about ECPM. Talk to them about RPM. Ask them, what is your RPM? That's all you have to say. And then you'll get the, str the straight answer. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what happens to RPMs over time and how you can make sure that you're always making the most money possible. So let's say this is ad network A, and this is their RPM. That says ECPM. It should say RPM. Sorry, I forgot to change that. Pretend that says RPM. OK, RPM changes a lot. And the reason is that advertisers are always spending different amounts of money. In Christmas, think about it. Every advertiser spends a ton of money because they know that everyone is out there shopping and they want them to buy their products. And then all of a sudden in January, there's no real reason to advertise anymore. So advertisers start spending a lot less money. On top of that, some networks have, are really good at selling to advertisers and others aren't. So some are going to have really high RPMs and every once in a while they'll lose a deal or something so it'll dip. Others are always going to have low RPMs, and every once in a while they'll get a big deal and their RPM will go up. So basically, you know, you have this situation where there's all these different networks and their RPMs are always changing. Okay, so it's very complicated. How do I pick? What am I supposed to do here? The right answer is you always want to have the best of everything. You always want to be working with a combination of ad networks in a way that you always get the best possible RPM. And the way you do that is through a tool called mediation. Has anyone heard of mediation? Awesome. OK, good. Mediation basically lets you do this. You don't have to work with just one ad network. You can work with multiple ad networks. OK? Mediation is a tool where you have all three ad networks combined in one SDK through a system called a mediation layer that allows you to serve ads from all three networks. And you can select, OK, today ad network A is, is performing the best. Let's use ad network A. Ad network C is the best today. Let's use ad network C today. That way you're always optimizing your revenues and making as much money as possible, OK? AdMob has a mediation layer. So again, at the end of everything I've shown you guys, I've said you can actually go to admob.com right now. You can actually use AdMob mediation. You will get ads from AdMob, and you will also be able to install other networks so that when they have a higher paying ad, you can use the other network's ad too. We want you guys to make as much money as possible because it's better for the ecosystem. So consider mediation. The last thing is about measurement, OK? Mo the thing that most uh, application developers measure is the number of downloads, right? So this is screenshots from, uh, from, for example, the Android market where you can see I got this many downloads. You know, Half of them are from the US. Half of them are from Mexico. What do you do with that, right? That's interesting. That's good to know. But it doesn't really tell you that much, OK? It's helpful, but it's not, you're not going to make that many business decisions 
based on how many downloads you have, with the possible exception of, I don't have any users, maybe I should stop making apps. That would be the only useful decision you could make from number of downloads. <laughs> what you really care much more about is engagement. Okay? So I want to teach I want to tell you guys about Google Analytics for applications. You guys might know that online Google Google Analytics works uh, by actually tracking what each user is doing at every point in your website at any given moment. So you can see on a website, these are my most popular pages. This is where people get lost and leave the site. And it helps you figure out, how do I improve my website? Analytics works differently on mobile, OK? Cookies don't work as well on mobile. All kinds of things don't work as well on mobile. So we have developed an SDK for Google Analytics specifically for iPhone and Android applications. So you can actually get an SDK, install it in your application, and start tracking much more interesting metrics than you can with just knowing how many downloads you got. For example, talking about games. Maybe every user of your game gets stuck on level three. And you don't even know that because you don't go out there and survey your users, right? And you're wasting a lot of time building level 14 and level 15 and level 16 when no one is even ever getting to those levels, OK? This is an example of the type of thing that you need to know. You need to know that so that you can focus on making level 3 easier or I don't know, whatever the case may be. Maybe you have a social app and you realize that people, you, you, you built a functionality that you thought was going to be amazing and no one's using it. But there's this other functionality that you built that you didn't even think twice about, and that's what every, everybody is actually using in your application. Maybe that's what your application should actually be about. Maybe you're actually going to change the way your application works based on that new information. The point is, you can't make decisions like that if you don't have really good analytics to understand what your users want. You're going to build what your users want. You're not going to build what you want. You're going to build what your users want. And that's how you're going to get a lot of users. So I strongly encourage you all to install the Android SDK into your application. Oh, sorry, Analytics SDK. Almost done. One really, really good thing about the Analytics SDK is that it'll actually let you figure out, you know, you're going to see, this is, the, this is the concept of a funnel, right? There's many, 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 many potential users out there in the world. There's really only a few that end up being really engaged users, OK? That's what the blue balls are supposed to be. What analytics will let you do is actually figure out, where are my active users coming from? Did they search for me on Google? Did they download me through an ad mob ad? Did they download me through a house ad from one of my other applications? This will help you figure out where you should be spending your money. If it turns out that your house ads aren't getting you active users, then stop wasting energy on your house ads. This is, so analytics will help you not only make your apps better, but also spend your money, your money smarter. So I'm going to skip that. Coming to the, the close here, these are the three things you need to focus on. OK? AdMob is a way to do all of these things. You can go to admob.com right now and set up an account, everything is completely free. Except for the paid advertising. That part's not free. You can test that part. But everything else is free. The house ads are free. Uh, the ads that we serve to you, that's obviously something that makes you money. We have our own mediation layer, which will allow you to use multiple networks. And of course, we have Google Analytics, which you can download at any time to figure out what's working and what's not working inside your app. I encourage you to check out guidetotheappgalaxy.com. This is a very cool website we just put together. We're actually going to be launching it in Spanish pretty soon. Uh, this has several case studies, including the one about Ant Smasher that I told you about. And it goes into a lot of detail on how did they do it, how much money are they making, what techniques did they use, It'll basically help you see other examples of successful developers and help you figure out what you want to do.
highly recommend you checking out this website. Not just this one, but also admob.com, as I mentioned, where you can get all that stuff. Technical questions, you can check out our code website if you have issues with installing the SDKs or any other number of things. And then you can always keep up with the latest news on mobile ads on our Google Mobile Ads blog. This is where we're always doing interesting stuff about the business, new releases, and so on and so forth. I'm going to leave this up on the screen so you guys can write it down if you want. Please come talk to me. Okay? I'm going to be standing right here, and I would love to meet you. Thank you very much.